Okay, peeps, welcome back. <clears throat> Today we're going to be talking about Tesla earnings and Tesla dropping 10%, or I should say closer to 13%, in one day. <clears throat> and what we're going to do about it, let's get it. So as you guys can see here on the charts, we have Tesla and Tesla pulled up next to each other. You guys can see, uh, basically, here's the earnings. Um Earnings for Tesla, pretty much the uh, earnings and revenue estimates and what the actual results were. So if we take a look at the actual day that this dumped, which was on the 18th, again, you have earnings on the 18th. You can see that it wasn't really much going on in Tesla. It was kind of going sideways. So I think investors were basically waiting for the earnings call um, and results. But as you guys can see, Tesla by itself dropped... <coughs> um, over the course of three days, pretty much a lot. It dropped about 16.6%. And Tesla, on the same day, for the following three days, dropped about 16% as well. So it's a very, it's, a, it's pretty much identical in terms of the downside. Uh, so before we get into the charts too heavy, um, show you guys our positions real quick. As you guys can see, we're actually down three grand in this position on uh, on our main portfolio here, but it is somewhat offset by the dividends. Uh, so we're actually only down about sixteen hundred bucks. But you have to, you guys have to understand, we haven't put any money in this position for a while, so we haven't really been averaging down. Uh, main reason is is because we already have a lot in Tesla and. Um, we also wanted to buy some of the other positions too. So we're not going to, we're most likely not going to put any more in this. We're just simply going to hold for now. We're not going to panic sell because um, we're not panicked about it. You know, we're pretty chill about this right now, but um, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on with this position. Just so you guys know, to follow up on a previous video, we did actually get the dividends. You can see them here. Uh, we were having issues getting these on M1 Finance. Uh, so they came in exactly like the Yield Max guys said, basically at the end of uh, the 18th, which was two days after the payment date. So here they are. Um, now, if we go over to Robinhood, you guys can see our total return year to date. We're actually only down 20% here. So we did pick up some, uh, quite a few shares on the dip when it happened. We may actually do it again here. We'll just have to wait and see. But uh Basically, kind of what we are doing right now is we're not really focused so much on the yield max ETFs. We kind of wanted to pick up some more of the um, the defiance ETFs. As you guys can see here, we have purchased quite a bit, actually. Uh, we've also been picking up a little bit of clip in anticipation of the following ex-dividend date. So you guys might be wondering where our end fleet position is. We're going to get into that closer to the end of the video. So let's go over the actual earnings. So... Basically, here's what happened. Uh, earnings came in below expectations. Whenever <clears throat> you got to understand from the perspective of these big tech companies, these are the largest companies on earth. So the markets have extremely high expectations for these companies. If these earnings do not come in absolutely perfect, investors don't care. They will absolutely brutalize these stocks. They do not care. They'll sell off. <clears throat> They'll even short it in some cases and say, well, you know, if I can't make money going on the way going up, then I'll just short the heck out of the stock and just make bank on the way down. I don't care, you know, and why would they? It's understandable, you know, if, um, if you're invested in a company long term to the upside, you know, why not just short the stock and make money? As a trader, that's how I think, not as an investor. But um, fortunately for all of us, you know, me personally, I don't trade or day trade, I should say, stocks. And I do swing trade stocks, but when I swing trade them, I swing trade them to the upside only. I only long swing trades, okay? But when I am day trading futures, I do both short and long in the futures markets and the indices because, I mean, why not? Why, why make money in one way when I can make it in two ways, right? So anyways, um, getting back to the earnings, basically earnings came in weak, lower than expectations, uh, Elon Musk kind of had some downer comments that uh, the markets didn't really like too much. Uh, so it says Wall Street wasn't really feeling too bullish. So basically, I mean, the charts reflect pretty much what they were feeling. So they sold off the stock. 
Uh, it reported adjusted earnings per share of 66 cents and automotive gross profit margins, excluding regulatory credit sales of 16.3%. <clears throat> so if we go into the actual earnings call, um, I guess this is like a transcript. Uh, we'll read some things off of this just so you guys understand. So it says Tes Tesla CEO Elon Musk sounds pessimistic note about economy on earnings call. Again, we've been... If you guys have been following our macroeconomic videos here on the channel, you guys know that we have been sounding the alarms on the Fed raising rates, the Fed tightening cycle, the inverted yield curve, things like that. We've been talking about this the same that we're talking, literally telling you the exact same thing as <laughs> Tesla has been telling you. So um, basically, he's talking about here caution on the state of the global economy. Uh, trying to focus on making cars more affordable. So what basically what they did was they reduced the um, the sale price of the Tesla vehicles. As you guys know, they're typically insanely expensive. They cut prices to uh, compete with other, other upcoming EVs, which is good. The market needs competition. But at the same time, you know, with the Fed raising rates, um, like we've told you guys, automotive rates are more expensive. Auto rates in general will go up home rates will go up with the Fed funds rate. So it makes it much more expensive to buy a car. Now, all of a sudden, if you have a $300 car payment per month, you might be taking a look at six, seven, dollars $800 a month, simply because of the fact that the auto lenders have to raise rates in concurrence with the Fed funds rate. So um, another thing that he said that I think markets probably didn't like too much is uh, basically saying that the Cybertruck would not deliver significant positive cash flow for 12 to 18 months after production. Uh, and the company is focused on making its cars more affordable and made a high interest rate environment. So that's kind of a double whammy um, <clears throat> in terms of bearishness. <clears throat> Number one, if uh, Elon Musk is reducing, or Tesla, I should say, is reducing their car prices to uh, kind of counteract the Fed funds rate, and the, you know, basically it being expensive to borrow. Uh, markets are not going to like that too much because they don't really care so much about the Fed funds rate. They want to see car prices higher so that Tesla produces more profit so they can make money because that's that's what investors and traders are in the game for to make money, right? And on the flip side, you also have the you know Cybertruck. It's, because the car prices are lower, the Cybertruck is most likely not going to be profitable as quickly as if the prices were higher because, again, countering the Fed funds rate. Um, and investors don't like seeing that when they're investing in a company, whether it's a growth stock or a dividend-paying stock. Investors, not traders, typically want to see something that's cash flow positive. That's exactly what they want to see. Dividend growth stocks are a prime example of that. People that invest in dividend growth stocks they want to see something that's cash flow positive for a long period of time, okay? And they're not going to budge on that. If it's not cash flow positive, then they probably just don't want to touch it. So with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and um, take a look. Well, before we get into the actual technicals here, we'll take a look at the earnings. So basically, earnings didn't really come in all that bad. I mean, it came in below expectations, but... As you guys can see, it's not really down that much. So earnings came in slightly less than 10% down, which isn't really a big deal. Uh, revenue came in just 3% down. I mean, again, it is a lot of money. You're talking $837 million. That's a lot for a company as big as Tesla. But um, I mean, the earnings result itself wasn't like catastrophic. I think what's really going on here, if I'm being honest from my own personal perspective, I think basically investors and um, pretty much were overreacting. And you also have like, so basically investors got emotional, they overreacted, they pretty much panic sold their shares. And on top of that, you have day traders and swing traders that saw the opportunity to short this stock and they're shorting the stock on top of investors selling their shares. And that's why you have this huge, massive sell-off, okay? Um, again, you know, we trade and we invest, so we can tell you guys right now, it's probably a combination of those three. And uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, as a result, Tesla kind of got walloped pretty badly. So from the top to the bottom on Tesla, or I should say the local top here, um, you guys can see that we're roughly down about 30%. Um, and this is on the year-to-date 
uh, January is back here. As you guys can see, this is the largest drop pretty much so far that we've had this year. Um, now, if we go over to Tesla, you can see that from the exact same time frame, literally the exact same candle here. If you're taking a look on both charts, you guys can see that we dropped uh, slightly more. So, okay, so about 9% more, but... Um, I mean, again, you know, Tesla, Tesla is pretty volatile. It's not going to be exact um, every single time. So if we go back a little bit further, uh, we could basically take like, I guess this peak here, we can compare these two. So uh, this peak on Tesla dropped about 29%, whereas this peak on Tesla dropped... slightly less so okay so tesla was probably um a little bit more volatile to the downside if i if i would have to say the reason why it was not equal in this instance is because there's probably a lot of tesla investors that were freaking out and selling are we going to freak out and sell no because we're extremely bullish on tesla long term and um something else we want to point out here is as you guys can see there's a lot of green earnings here that's what this e stands for but take a look at this so this was another earnings call where only the earnings were down but the revenue was up but look at how the markets reacted the markets basically punished the heck out of tesla stock and as you guys can see from the earnings call it got walloped pretty hard minus 40 percent again investors you know they want to see perfection that's what they want so um, could there be more downside? Possibly. Um, we're taking a look at a possible, possible bottom on Tesla right now. We got a pretty large support here between 211 to 220. Uh, the next major support below that would basically be down here at 154 to, or not, sorry, not that level, um, 190 to about 210, and then all the way down to 151, which is almost exactly with this macro trend line here. But, you know, again, it all comes down to are you bullish on Tesla or are you not bullish on Tesla? If we take a look at the overall chart here, Tesla kind of chopped sideways for years and then became a really big profitable company. I mean, guys, I don't know about you, but I only see pretty much up overall on the stocks. So, um, and electric cars and robots and things of like that nature are pretty much the future that's the wave of the technology future so i'm pretty sure that's not going anywhere in fact it's probably going to become more mainstream so with that being said um there's actually one more thing that i wanted to look at with you guys before we close out here so um we're actually gonna as soon as i can find it we're going to pull up the Netflix chart because interestingly enough, on the exact same day, Netflix also had earnings. And basically, um, <clears throat> just so you guys know, we sold out of our employee position because we we're slightly in the money. It was like a few dollars of profit or something, but we swapped that money over to JEPY and TripleQY to increase our income on the month. Uh, we will be picking up more shares of Enfly in the coming weeks, but um you know, we we didn't really know if it was going to pop up and then drop or what the deal is. But uh, so we got Netflix here and um, we're going to pull up Enfly on this chart. So as you guys can see, Netflix had earnings on the exact same day. They had um, only a slight beat, but the markets were extremely bullish on this. Whereas Tesla only had a slight miss, but they basically punished the stock. So as you guys can see here, we had a massive gap up on earnings. We were up 16%. Um, we'll, we'll just pull it from the low to the peak here. So at the maximum point, 18% roughly. And if we do the same thing on Enfly, you guys can see that uh, Enfly picked up basically almost the entire move of Netflix. So in my personal opinion, do I think that Tesla is only ever going to go down over time? In all honesty, not really. I mean, Netflix is and Enfly is a good example of what could happen in a bullish environment. So um, I'm still pretty bullish on all of this, on all of these yield max funds and on the big tech companies. But uh, hey, let us know your thoughts down below. What do you think? Do you think they're going to go down over time? Do you think they're going to go up over time? Uh, do you think that the... 
yield curve is going to uninvert soon. As you guys can see here, we're pretty close to uninverting. Um, so yeah, leave your comments down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see y'all later. Peace.